Green. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, David Mitchell and Russell Howard, Frankie Ball and Hugh Dennis and Fiona Allen. This round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of everyday goings on in the NHS. But what does TFHC stand for? Is it tired, fatty, has cardiac? <laughs> that, that's harsh, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> is it from the Daily Mail? Is it terrible foreign hypochondriac chancer? <laughs> is it this fellow who's croaked? <laughs> Which news thing was that from? It was the, the uh, Daily Express of 1951. <laughs> <laughs> is it television fans hate casualty? <laughs> is it transplanted face hides Cameron? <laughs> is it French foot hits Car Shelton? <laughs> is it that word, French foot yeah. has hit <laughs> Car Shelton? Is, is, is it that it's a particularly wet in Car Shelton or just people are just taking just it out? They, they have a bath too close to when they have to be at work. <laughs> That fool has chlamydia. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you the T stands for Tories. Tories fight hospital cuts. Yes, that's exactly oh, what it is. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. The answer I was looking for was Tories fight hospital cuts, refers to David Cameron's promise to battle Gordon Brown on the problems in the NHS as he tries to regain the initiative amid rumours of an autumn election. Okay, in what way did he threaten Brown with the NHS? He threatened him with a bare-knuckle fight. He's exactly the phrase he used. <laughs> such he just, a, he's a really insensitive phrase to use, isn't it? It's such a schoolboy thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he'll need more hospitals when I'm finished with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you just know Brown's going to turn up just with a, like, a big lamp. Yeah, yeah, do you want it, you bitch? <laughs> but they were lying, Gordon, they were lying. <laughs> Brown took it for a fight with a lamp. I don't know why I said lamp. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, baseball bat. I meant to say lamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not called a bare knuckle and lamp fight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's kind of like the untouchables. He hits you with a knuckle, you get him with a lamp. <laughs> if he had a WWF name, it would be something imaginative like Gordon Brown. <laughs> and his pre match psycho speech would be, I would probably win. <laughs> But why in this phase of our, and like, I mean, how did how did Cameron launch his health initiative? He launched it very badly. He did. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, he did. it's a hand glider and threw it off the top of the House of Commons. <laughs> He came back from holiday and he said, we're going to save the health service and all these hospitals are closing. And then about six hours later, the hospitals phoned up and said, actually, we're not closing. <laughs> You've got that completely wrong, you dork. Yeah, he did. And he, his own MP uh, in Norfolk uh, had to go, well, we won't apologise to the Queen Elizabeth uh, Hospital in King's Lynn. It was never closing. Sorry about that. Uh, and at least, kind of, a, I'm so desperately Prime Minister, I'm going to start closing hospitals now. Uh, <laughs> it is so ridiculous. He's come back and he's launched this thing called the Public Services Policy Review to gain the initiative back from Labour. Like, anybody is remotely interested in a document called the Public Services Policy Review. <laughs> if I wanted someone to buy that or look at it, they'd have to call it Harry Potter and the Public <laughs> Services Policy Review. And at the end, one of the Weasleys would die on a trolley, having been left there for 36 hours. That's how that yeah. There's a thing, isn't there, they want to make Doc does now work more evenings and weekends. Yeah, GPs, yeah. But surely the only point of going to the doctor is that you get to take time off work. That's the point of it, man. <laughs> if you're lucky enough to get genital herpes or irritable <laughs> bowel syndrome, that can be an extra fortnight off a year. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Are you feeling squiffy? Do it on a Monday. <laughs> What other policies have the Tories hinted at? More tax cuts for businesses. It is the first thing they've come out with is basically more money for bastards. <laughs> That's the Tory policy. The next policy will be you don't have to pay the congestion charge if you're on horseback and hunting a tramp. <laughs> he can say that, but he has now got a policy, hasn't he? He break down Britain, and the way he's going to sort this out, David Cameron, is he said he's going to give 20 quid a week to married couples so as to keep them to stay together. Because that's going to make all the difference, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I hate you! I don't know why we got married! I'm leaving! There's a tenner in it for you! <laughs> I'm here for keeps! <laughs> actual government policy they're talking about is having cohabiting legislation. So if you've stayed with someone for two years, they have married rights and they can get half your stuff. Which is playing into my hands because my stuff is shit. <laughs> I trade it for two years of sex. <laughs> How has Blue Peter managed to upset the Tories this week? 
Have they changed their name to Red Pizza? <laughs> They have not. No, no, they have not. No. Is uh, Con Connie Huck? It is Connie Huck, yes. Uh, does she hate him? <laughs> okay. Does she hate him? No. Yeah, I tell you, it doesn't hate Connie Huck. Okay, Dara. She's a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> Don't what, miss with the hook. What is that? Uh, <laughs> do you fancy her? No, no, it's an old kind of thing. Kids TV kind of thing, and I quite like I, She's getting dissed uh, at the moment. Yeah. I'm just saying she's getting dissed. He loves her. He loves her. Look at him squirm. <laughs> I've never you? met her, Dara. I've never met her. No. Would you like, I'm clearly to, not Would you like to, to say to up to her and say, here's something I made earlier? <laughs> 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 Dara, does your wife watch this? Yeah, but she doesn't watch Blue Peter, so I'm all right. Uh, <laughs> Sticky back plastic. <laughs> It's just a Blue Peter term. It had no actual gag there. So, yeah, it's very good. You might have just shaked the dog, I can't say. And you know why Blue Peter got grief off the toys? Because uh, she was, did this press conference that was supposedly about how cycling is good, and but Ken Livingston went on about how the Tories are shit. <laughs> and then it felt that she was in some way associated with this being a party political press conference when she thought it had been an environmental stroke cycle around press conference. And the BBC apologised in the most sort of pathetic terms <laughs> to the Tories for having done this. And apparently they have now imposed upon her a new contract where she can't say what she likes anymore. So now Blue Peter presenters no longer have the same human rights as the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, this week on Blue Peter, they're making a voodoo doll of David Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, she's got the perfect opportunity, hasn't she? That bit where they're making a present and they go, send your parents out of the room. She can pretty much say what she likes to children. <laughs> <laughs> send your parents out of the room, we're making an advent calendar. Rebel by killing people and blowing shit up. <laughs> That's why you don't work in kids' TV, friends. <laughs> Essentially, she publicly expressed an opinion about cycling, which, as far as I'm concerned, she's allowed to do. At the same time, in the same room, the Mayor of London said the Tories were a, a bunch of bastards, which also he's allowed to do. What's the problem? Hey, the, that problem the problem was that the Tory council believed that that would in some way show that the BBC and Blue Peter were endorsing Ken Livingston's push for a Lord Mayor of London next year. Do you know the way that Blue Peter viewers, who are age 8 and 40, yeah. are big voters? <laughs> <laughs> Some, some of them are eight, some of them are 14, some of them are around about 35. 35. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, eight. Don't mess with the hook. Uh, which, world, which world leader's holiday photographs have been in the news? Ah, uh, this is Putin, isn't it? This is, of course, Putin. Yeah. These photos are great. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm going to Just <laughs> striding <laughs> randomly across the lake. He oh. looks like a gay porn star. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's November. <laughs> but he was going on a trip, wasn't he, to thank Prince Albert of Monaco for helping them get the Winter Olympic Games. Yeah. And yet, Prince Albert, seeing these photos, he'd be thinking, crikey, what have I let myself in for, <laughs> won't he? What sort of favours am I going to get from Vladimir Putin? Oil yourself up, Albert, we're going for a sauna. How <laughs> gay <laughs> 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 okay, does it sound? Basically, you've got a topless man knocking about with a bloke called Prince Albert. <laughs> <laughs> it's gayer than right said Fred dancing on the doily. <laughs> In the previous photo. So Why is that horse got a spike through its head? <laughs> Could have made disobey him like, in some planning to launch a nuclear strike <laughs> from that horse's head. With one of those wooden nuclear bombs that went out. You know. <laughs> Guy, you know, he could level us at any time, and there he is. He waxes his chest, he needs a bra. It's just quite scary. And you very frightening. he would slap me like a twig. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to see in a leader someone who can crush a man's head like a beer can. <laughs> I would like to see John Prescott in a series of similar photos. Yeah. <laughs> he still gets a hard time about the whole Litvinenko thing, doesn't he? Imagine you think Litvinenko wasn't a very good spy if he doesn't know not to accept a glowing cup of tea <laughs> from a glowing teapot from a man who appears to be wearing a spacesuit. <laughs> I, I was going to make jokes about Russians all being gangsters, but some r Russian people spoke to me, and all I'd like to say is, I'm looking forward to Chelsea continuing their great start to the season <laughs> and the safe return of my pregnant wife. <laughs> Give that round of applause to Russell, David, and Andy.
Now we play around called Harry Potter and the Wheel of News. <laughs> this game involves Hugh, Andy, Frankie and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our new generator, it settles on a topic, and any can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. Okay, here we go, let's spin the wheel. The first subject is alternative medicine. Can I have a volunteer to talk about that? Andy. <laughs> Apparently a lot of people trying to get into therapy at the moment are the people knocking it, saying, you know, oh, well, you should just lose your inhibitions, talk about your problems to your friends. I thought I'd try this. I talked about my problems to my friends for a whole hour. Lost my inhibitions, also lost my friends. <laughs> I now tell my problems to taxi drivers. <laughs> Two advantages in this. One, it stops the taxi driver from telling you his problems. <laughs> and two, it's amazing how much quicker you get to your bloody destination. <laughs> well done, Andy Parsons. Okay, let's spin the wheel again. Subject is the media. Who wants to come in that? Russell. I'll do that. Um, obviously, you know, the way I like getting the news is Radio 5 Live. It's fantastic. It's just news and nutters, isn't it? They'll read out, like, that was the Pope's view on abortion, and then, Hello, Felicity Puddleduck here, livid and ill-informed. I'd just like to say those harlots who give birth to their children aged two that charge you to national service. I'm off to bake a cake. <laughs> <laughs> Sat there listening, then the next night, David, are you out of your mind cloning? Think it through. Two versions of me. Want to go out and commit a crime? Who gets blamed for it? Me! <laughs> And then the most ridiculous story, a man in Bristol found the face of Jesus on a crisp. And suddenly, <laughs> I couldn't believe it, I put up my frazzles, there he was! <laughs> okay, the loser is Hugh and Frankie. The next topic is sport. Do you know, I've heard a rumour that horse racing may not be completely honest. <laughs> unbelievable, isn't it? But how, how do you stop the corruption? Well, one solution may be to call horses something like mafia-backed second favourite. Because, <laughs> because if everyone did that, everyone would be confused, no one would know who to bet on, and the whole thing would be fair again. <laughs> and they're often the first to show is blatantly bribed, blatantly bribed, followed by mafia-backed second favourite. They're just ahead of dope to the gills, mysterious limp. <laughs> and just behind them, out for a canter, and I'll fall at the fifth. And as they come to the fifth, I'll fall at the fifth has fallen. I'll fall at the fifth has fallen at the fifth in a magnificent display of cheating. And they're coming into the final furlong, mysterious limp is slowing. Out for a canter is clearly struggling, but coming through strongly is mafia-backed second favourite. And as they cross the line, mafia-backed second favourite has won it, which is remarkable seeing as he has no head <laughs> that's been left in someone's bed for tomorrow morning well done you well done you okay Frankie let's see what you've been left with and it's environment <laughs> <laughs> didn't that used to be an advert for mint <laughs> uh, why now you getting a hard time from the environmental lobby because they've launched a seven pound flight to New York, although as always with Ryanair, it does land slightly outside New York, in Dublin. <laughs> it's a pity we can't harness more natural energy, isn't it? It's a pity we can't harness the power of British moaning. <laughs> oh no, that moaning powered light bulbs on the blink again. Oh no, then it is back on. <laughs> Everyone complained about the floods, didn't they? I like storms. I like thunder and lightning. What I like to do during a storm is shag my girlfriend and pretend that we're taking part in the conception of the Antichrist. <laughs> Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. I bring that round the point to Frankie and you. Okay, this round is called, this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. David, which category would you like? Um, education, please. Okay, your category is education. The answer is 25 in a row. What is the question? Um, how many green bottles are standing on Charles Kennedy's windowsill? <laughs> <laughs> is it you've just been picked up whilst hitchhiking? What's the last thing you want to hear the truck driver chuckle as he nods towards the 24 empty rucksacks in the back? <laughs> Times is Dara being cracked one off on Blue Peter. It was unfair to draw her into a political battle. I don't have you know, woman, you know, a man not form an unnatural attachment to someone they've never met on the television without it resorting to masturbation jokes. <laughs> 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 just, just made a little 
shrine. Oh, 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 Twice been unfairly dragged into political discussions that are not of our doing, and I just that, that's what I'm defending here. Mm. Is it, uh, is it uh, how many years has the UK finished bottom of the Eurovision Song Contest? Is it how many times we won it in 1997? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that shoots you down, my friend. Would you like to sing us that song, David? <laughs> well, I would, but unfortunately, a court order says I mustn't. <laughs> It was, it, was, it was Katrina and the Waves, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Is it how many times does Victoria Beckham throw up during lunch? Yeah. Is it how many letters are there after A? <laughs> Is it Cliff Richard has had 25 top 10 hits. How many were shit? <laughs> Is it how many researchers from GMTV won phoning competitions last year? <laughs> Just very good at those questions. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to steer you towards the correct answer. It is an education issue. Is it to do with uh, GCSEs? It is to do with No, actually, it's to do with A levels. Actually. Okay. The uh, results are getting better every year, and they have been for the past 25 years. That's exactly right. Well done, Russell. Yes, the question I was looking for is, for how many years have this country's school exam results been improving? This is the news that in 2007, the UK school exam grades have improved for the 25th successive year, with record pass rates and more people getting the top marks, leading to calls from some quarters for the exams to be made more difficult. Well, what's amazing about it? No wonder kids are so disaffected in this country. Like, they get the best results ever. And how do we respond? Do we say, well done? No, we go, well, they're getting easier. <laughs> it might be it's like 50 essays in an hour, and a man put you with a stick. If you got one wrong, they killed your mum. Now get out of my room. And you sat there going, just back off ground. I'm cleverer than you. You, you, do, you do put young people in this country in a ridiculous <laughs> catch 22, where all the coverage is about how stupid young people yeah. are, but you give them one chance to shine, and then they all work really hard and get A's, and then you tell them it's further proof that they're stupid. Mm. <laughs> what this is a massive argument in favour of is a huge cut in funding for education. Rather yeah. than making the exams harder, let's just make the pupils stupider. <laughs> Clearly, too much money is going into education. You're educating them too much at this people say People say that education's screwed, and then at this time of year it becomes clear that it's actually too good. <laughs> Better than we need. <laughs> the thing is, though, everyone gets to go to university now anyway, because everything is a university. It used to be you'd turn up to do a gig in a uni and you go, didn't this used to be a polytechnic? And now you turn up and you go, wasn't this an all-night garage? <laughs> Wasn't this a swimming pool last year? There was a thing in Scotland this week where they've introduced philosophy for primary school children who are already quite philosophical having watched all their brothers and sisters die in a series of unrelated chip pan fires. <laughs> are girls still doing better than boys? Ah, now boys apparently are closing that Hang gap. On. Yes, uh, by, by only a tiny percentage. Yeah, there will always be differences because boys want the tit and the girls want commitment. Yeah, uh, so. <laughs> I always find it school. The, the one thing I could never work out was how to get girls' bras undone. I just couldn't work out. And then eventually I realised that these girls were wearing a different type of bra from my gran. <laughs> it would be a good idea to get kids more in tune with what goes on in life, isn't it? I can remember spending a whole day finding out that wood lice quite liked dark, damp conditions. I have never been able to use that piece of information in everyday life. Yet. And when you're there in your flat, aren't you? Your girlfriend's left you, you've lost your job, <laughs> there's flood water lapping round your ankles, it's going to be little consolation to you that you know wood lice would quite like these conditions. <laughs> Five or six years in a row, they explain autumn to you every year during the autumn. And as far as, as I know, there are very few jobs that are based on the understanding of autumn. <laughs> also, isn't it something that happens anyway? Is <laughs> something I can make a note of, otherwise the trees aren't going to shed their leaves? Because it's just protecting you from the shock of it happening again. Oh no, the world is dying! Ah! We've told you about this, David. <laughs> We've told you about this a number of times now. Yes. Why are the trees naked? <laughs> Isn't, yeah. the, isn't the whole thing with school, though, that it's never going to be as stimulating as life is now for children? Because they've got, like, blockbuster movies and video games. And, you know, there's no way that school can be as stimulating as Tekken. 
<laughs> so, why have you got the head of a leopard? Quiet boy, fireball. <laughs> Okay, uh, which British sportsman will be looking for a new job soon? Oh, is Tim, um, Tim Henman is going to retire, isn't he? Apparently, yes, the bad back, yeah. They said his decision is, uh, is because of his two young daughters, who regularly beat him in straight sets. <laughs> so he's actually going to try and retire, and then never quite actually make it. And end up playing until he's 100 years old. He'll just bottle the retirement just at the final minute. <laughs> I think, to be fair to Henman, he was once the fourth in the world, let's not forget, once the fourth in the world and reached six Grand Slam finals, which is a great achievement for a totally shit player. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just it's difficult to cheer on someone who in your heart of hearts you know you could probably beat yourself. <laughs> yeah, but any new 10 sport, I mean any 10 sport on a regular basis will see around them, or perhaps be one of these people who sits in a chair, their fat rolling over the side <laughs> going, you're useless, get off the pitch, I should be out there. <laughs> Uh, as we said, it would be pretty boring watching sport if you just sit there going, well, I just think they're all excellent. <laughs> well done to all the effort that's gone in, and I don't actually care who wins, because I think sport wins here. <laughs> If Tim Henman had won Wimbledon, it would have been so weird, it would have actually torn a hole in our reality. <laughs> oh, Henman's won, and here to present the trophy is Winston Churchill with the head of a bee. <laughs> Put it this way, the last time a British player won, the Nazis marched into the Rhineland, so, you know. <laughs> in 1977? <laughs> no, I was talking about the men's. Oh, OK. okay. That's when they went to the Rhineland, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but actually, in 1977, the last time Britain won, they released Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> and what's more, 1977, the year Connie Hook was born. <laughs> Not <laughs> actually. <laughs> I'd like to see every sportsman do a final year of their career drunk. <laughs> oh, missed it. Oh, who cares? I'm not in there anyway. <laughs> David Beckham going up to take a penalty and just puking on the ball. <laughs> Very good, ladies and gentlemen, the point around to Frankie Hugh and Fiona! <laughs> now we've come to our final quick fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. Okay, here we go. The first subject tonight is bad things to hear on an airplane. In the event of the cabin decompressing, oxygen masks will drop from the ceiling and untangling them will annoy you before you die. <laughs> well, uh, if you look out of the portside window in just uh, a minute or so, you'll see me. Bye. <laughs> That's the first cloud I've ever seen with a ski lift on it. The only thing less likely than surviving crashing into the sea is the Coast Guard hearing the whistles on your life jacket. <laughs> oh, hi. I've got a hobby farm. Would you like me to tell you all about it for the next nine hours? <laughs> Louisa and her in-flight team will be looking after you today. And your hijacker's name is Ibrahim. <laughs> Hold on! I've just entered us in the Red Bull Challenge! <laughs> Will the fat people please move to the back of the plane? <laughs> this is a no-smoking flight, although do feel free to join me in the cockpit when we've opened the window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, due to unforeseen Islamic fundamentalism, this plane is being diverted to paradise. <laughs> Punch it, Chewy. <laughs> Okay, the next topic is the worst person to be married to. I love you lots. Oh, let's see what Mr. Tiddles thinks of you. What do you think? Die, bitch! <laughs> Brace yourself, Agnes. It's that time of year again. <laughs> These are my late rabbit's ashes. Say hello. <laughs> when I said I was a positive person, I meant HIV. <laughs> I brought home a video to turn us on. It's Fred Gibner's Age of Steam. 
You thought I was a Thai lady. Well, you are half right. <laughs> of course we're going to go out tonight. It's Hitler's birthday. <laughs> but he's my dad. We do everything together. <laughs> you want me to put my dingling into your fairy cave? Are you mad, woman? <laughs> Well, you can't use that toilet. That's my toilet. <laughs> he sleeps in the bed with us, okay? Don't make me choose between you and the wolf. <laughs> please, please, Pavarotti, let me go on top. <laughs> okay, point here, let around, and a Russell Day. the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyd, Hugh Dennis and Fiona Allen. <laughs> Congratulations to Annie Barton, David Mitchell and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Guy Ray. Good night. <laughs>
he came back from holiday and he said, we're going to save the health service and all these hospitals are closing. And then about six hours later, the hospitals phoned up and said, actually, we're not closing. <laughs> You've got that completely wrong, you dork. Yeah, he did. And he, his own MP uh, in Norfolk uh, had to go, well, we want to apologise to the Queen Elizabeth uh, Hospital in King's Lane. It was never closing. Sorry about that. Uh, and at least, kind of, a, I'm so desperately Prime Minister, I'm going to start closing hospitals now. Uh, <laughs> it is so ridiculous. He's come back and he's launched this thing called the Public Services Policy Review to gain the initiative back from Labour. Like, anybody is remotely interested in a document called the Public Services Policy Review. <laughs> if I wanted someone to buy that or look at it, they'd have to call it Harry Potter and the Public <laughs> Services Policy Review. And at the end, one of the Weasleys would die on a trolley, having been left there for 36 hours. That's what I mean. There's a thing, isn't there, they want to make doctors now work more evenings and weekends. Yeah, GPs, yeah. But surely the only point of going to the doctor is that you get to take time off work. That's the point of it, man. If you're lucky enough to get genital herpes or irritable bowel syndrome, that can be an extra fortnight off a year. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> Are you feeling squiffy? Do it on a Monday. <laughs> What other policies have the Tories hinted at? More tax cuts for businesses. It is the, the first thing they've come out with is basically more money for bastards. <laughs> That's the Tory policy. The next policy will be you don't have to pay the congestion charge if you're on horseback and hunting a tramp. <laughs> you say that, but he has now got a policy, hasn't he? He'd break down Britain, and the way he's going to sort this out, David Cameron, is he said he's going to give 20 quid a week to married couples so as to keep them to stay together. Because that's going to make all the difference, isn't it? <laughs> I hate you! I don't know why we got married! I'm leaving! There's a tenner in it for you! <laughs> I'm here for keeps! <laughs> the actual government policy they're talking about is having cohabiting legislation. So if you've stayed with someone for two years, they have married rights and they can get half your stuff. Which is playing into my hands because my stuff is shit. <laughs> I will happily trade it for two years of sex. <laughs> How has Blue Peter managed to upset the Tories this week? Have they changed their name to Red Peter? <laughs> they have not. Have they no, not? no, they have not. No. Is uh, Connie Huck? It is Connie Huck, yes. Uh, does she hate him? <laughs> I don't know. Does she hate him? No. Yeah, I tell you, it doesn't hate Connie Huck. Hey, Dora. She's a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't miss the hook. What is that? Uh, do you fancy her? No, I do not do it. It's kind of kids TV kind of thing, and I quite like. I, she's getting dissed. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying she's he loves her. He loves her. Right? He loves uh, her. <laughs> Look at him squirm. <laughs> I've never, never met her, Dara. I've never met her. No. Not not to clearly to not Would you like to sidle now? up to him and say, here's something I made earlier? <laughs> 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 Dara, does your wife watch this? Yeah, but she doesn't watch Blue Peter, so I'm all right. Uh, <laughs> sticky back plastic. <laughs> It's just a Blue Peter term. It had no actual gag there. So, yeah, sorry. You might have just said, shit, the dog, if that's it. Oh, it was a little... know why Blue Peter got grief off the toys? Because uh, she was, did this press conference that was supposedly about how cycling is good, and but Ken Livingston went on about how the Tories are shit. <laughs> and then it felt that she was in some way associated with this being a party political press conference when she thought it had been an environmental stroke cycle around press conference. And the BBC apologised in the most sort of pathetic terms <laughs> to the Tories for having done this. And apparently they have now imposed upon her a new contract where she can't say what she likes anymore. So now Blue Peter presenters no longer have the same human rights as the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, this week on Blue Peter, they're making a voodoo doll of David Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got the perfect opportunity, hasn't she? That bit where they're making a present and they go, send your parents out of the room. She can pretty much say what she likes to children. Eh? <laughs> send your parents out of the room, we're making an advent calendar. Rebel by killing people and blowing shit up. <laughs> That's why you don't work in kids' TV, friends. <laughs> 
essentially, she publicly expressed an opinion about cycling, which, as far as I'm concerned, she's allowed to do. At the same time, in the same room, the Mayor of London said the Tories were a, a bunch of bastards, which also he's allowed to do. What's the problem? Uh, the, problem the problem was that the Tory councillor believed that that would in some way show that the BBC and Blue Peter were endorsing Ken Livingston's push for a Lord Mayor of London next year. Do you know the way that Blue Peter viewers, who are 18, 18 and 14, yeah. are big voters? Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, David Mitchell and Russell Howard, Frankie Ball and Hugh Dennis and Fiona Allen. <laughs> Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of everyday goings on in the NHS. But what does TFHC stand for? Is it tired, fatty, has cardiac? That's <laughs> <laughs> harsh, to be honest. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Is it from the Daily Mail? Is it terrible foreign hypochondriac chancer? <laughs> Is it this fellow who's croaked? <laughs> Which you said was that from? <laughs> the, uh, Daily Express in 1951. <laughs> Is it television fans hate casualty? <laughs> Is it transplanted face hides Cameron? <laughs> Is it French foot hits Car Shelton? <laughs> Is it that it's particularly wet in Cushion or just people are just taking it's it out? Like, they, they have a bath too close to when they have to be at work. <laughs> that fool has chlamydia. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you the T stands for Tories. Tories fight hospital cuts. Yes, that's exactly oh, what it is. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. The answer I was looking for was Tories fight hospital cuts refers to David Cameron's promise to battle Gordon Brown on the problems in the NHS as he tries to regain the initiative amid rumours of an autumn election. Okay, in what way did he threaten Brown with the NHS? He threatened him with a bare-knuckle fight. It's exactly the phrase he used. It's such it's a, a really insensitive phrase to use, isn't it? It's such a schoolboy thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he'll need more hospitals when I'm finished with him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and you just know Brown's going to turn up just with, a, like, a big lamp. Yeah, yeah, do you want it, you bitch? <laughs> so they were lying, Gordon, they were lying. <laughs> Brown took it for a fight with a lamp. I don't know why I said lamp. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 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 I <laughs> Maybe it's kind of like the untouchables. He hits you with a knuckle, you get him with a lamp. <laughs> if he had a WWF name, it would be something imaginative like Gordon Brown. <laughs> and his pre match psycho to me to be, I would probably win. <laughs> but why in the face of. And like, I mean, how, did, how did Cameron launch his health initiative? He launched it by badly. He did. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, he made it a hand glider and threw it off the top of the House of Commons. <laughs> He came back from holiday and he said, we're going to save the health service and all these hospitals are closing. And then about six hours later, the hospitals phoned up and said, actually, we're not closing. <laughs> You've got that completely wrong, you dork. Yeah. <laughs> he did. And he, his own MP uh, in Norfolk uh, had to go, well, we want to apologise to the Queen Elizabeth uh, Hospital in King's Lynn. It was never closing. Sorry about that. Uh, and it is kind of a, I'm so desperately Prime Minister, I'm going to start closing hospitals now. Uh, <laughs> it is so ridiculous. He's come back and he's launched this thing called the Public Services Policy Review to gain the initiative back from Labour. Like, anybody is remotely interested in a document called the Public Services Policy Review. <laughs> if they wanted someone to buy that or look at it, they'd have to call it Harry Potter and the Public <laughs> Services Policy Review. And at the end, one of the Weasleys would die on a trolley, having been left there for 36 hours. That's how it yeah. There's a thing, isn't there, they want to make doctors now work more evenings and weekends. Yeah, GPs, yeah. But surely the only point of going to the doctor is that you get to take time off work. <laughs> That's the point of it, man. <laughs> if you're lucky enough to get genital herpes or irritable bowel syndrome, that can be an extra fortnight off a year. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> Are you feeling squiffy? Do it on a Monday. <laughs> 
What other policies have the Tories hinted at? More tax cuts for businesses. It is the, the first thing they've come out with is basically more money for bastards. <laughs> that is the Tory policy. The next policy will be you don't have to pay the congestion charge if you're on horseback and hunting a tramp. <laughs> He say that, but he has now got a policy, hasn't he? He'd break down Britain, and the way he's going to sort this out, David Cameron, is he said he's going to give 20 quid a week to married couples so as to keep them to stay together. Because that's going to make all the difference, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I hate you! I don't know why we got married! I'm leaving! There's a tenner in it for you. <laughs> I'm here for keeps. <laughs> government policy they're talking about is having cohabiting legislation so if you've stayed with someone for two years they have married rights and they can get half your stuff which is playing into my hands because my stuff is shit <laughs> you can happily trade it for two years of sex <laughs> Blue Peter managed to upset the Tories this week. Have they changed their names to Red Peter? <laughs> they have not. Have they no, not? no, they have not. No. Is uh, C Connie Huck? It is Connie Huck, yes. Uh, does she hate him? <laughs> I don't know. Does she hate him? No. Yeah, I tell you, it doesn't hate Connie Huck. I do She's a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 don't miss the hook. What is that? Uh, do you fancy her? He dresses no, up as Arsene. He dresses up as Arsene. Kids TV kind of thing, and I quite like. I, she's getting dissed right, at so the moment. Yeah. I'm just saying she's. He loves her. Nice, he loves uh, her. And, uh, <laughs> look, see, look at him squirm. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, never met her, Dara. I've never met her. Never. Like I'm clearly you, not Would you like to, to sidle up to her and say, here's something I made earlier? <laughs> 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 Gareth, does your wife watch this? Yeah, but she doesn't watch Blue Peter, so I'm all right. Uh, <laughs> sticky back plastic. <laughs> It's just a Blue Peter term. It had no actual gag there. So, yeah, sorry. You might the dog, know why Blue Peter got grief off the toys? Because uh, she was, did this press conference that was supposedly about how cycling is good, and but Ken Livingstone went on about how the Tories are shit. <laughs> and then it felt that she was in some way associated with this being a party political press conference when she thought it had been an environmental stroke cycle around press conference. And the BBC apologised in the most sort of pathetic terms <laughs> to the Tories for having done this. And apparently they have now imposed upon her a new contract where she can't say what she likes anymore. So now Blue Peter presenters no longer have the same human rights as the rest. <laughs> Ironically, this week on Blue Peter, they're making a voodoo doll of David Cameron. <laughs> See, she's got the perfect opportunity, hasn't she? That bit where they're making a present and they go, send your parents out of the room. She can pretty much say what she likes to children. Eh? <laughs> send your parents out of the room, we're making an advent calendar. Rebel by killing people and blowing shit up. <laughs> That's why you don't work in kids' TV, friends. <laughs> Essentially, she publicly expressed an opinion about cycling, which, as far as I'm concerned, she's allowed to do. At the same time, in the same room, the Mayor of London said the Tories were a, a bunch of bastards, which also he's allowed to do. What's the problem? Uh, the, problem that the problem was that the Tory council believed that that would in some way show that the BBC and Blue Peter were endorsing Ken Livingstone's push for a Lord Mayor of London next year. Do you know the way that Blue Peter viewers, who are age 8 and 40, yeah. are big voters? <laughs> <laughs> Some, yeah, some of them are eight, some of them are 14, some of them are around about 35. 35. Uh, so. <laughs> 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 Don't mess with the hook. Uh, which, world, which world leaders' holiday photographs have been in the news? Ah, uh, this is Putin, isn't it? This is, of course, Putin. Yeah. Yeah. These photos are great. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm going to <laughs> Just striding Ooh. randomly across the lake. He oh. looks like a gay porn star. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, oh. that's, that's, uh, that's November. <laughs> but he was going on a trip, wasn't he, to thank Prince Albert of Monaco for helping them get the Winter Olympic Games. Yeah. And yet, Prince Albert, seeing these photos, he'd be thinking, crikey, what have I let myself in for, <laughs> won't he? What sort of favours am I going to get from Vladimir Putin? Oil yourself up, Albert, we're going for a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> How gay does it sound? Basically, you've got a topless man knocking about with a bloke called Prince Albert. <laughs> it's gayer than right said Fred dancing on the doily. <laughs> in the previous photo. So Why has that horse got a spike through its head? <laughs> Could have made disability. He's, like, he's planning to launch a nuclear strike. 
and that proves his head. With one of those wooden nuclear bombs that watch out. You know. I think it's a bit sad that this guy, you know, he could level us at any time, and there he is. He waxes his chest. He needs a bra. It's just quite scary. And you know, it's cool. frightening. He would snap me like a twig. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I've wanted to see in a leader. Someone who can crush a man's head like a beer can. <laughs> I would like to see John Prescott in a series of similar photos. Yeah. He still gets a hard time about the whole Litvinenko thing, doesn't he? Imagine you think Litvinenko wasn't a very good spy if he doesn't know not to accept a glowing cup of tea <laughs> from a glowing teapot from a man who appears to be wearing a spacesuit. <laughs> yeah, I was going to make jokes about Russians all being gangsters, but some re Russian people spoke to me. And all I'd like to say is, I'm looking forward to Chelsea continuing their great start to the season. <laughs> and the safe return of my pregnant wife. <laughs>